Hi, uh, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm at the um, University of Ottawa. In the last several days, I've produced a few videos, one on Arctic uh, sea ice decline, where we're heading uh, for the rest of the melt season until the uh, minimum sea ice extent is reached in uh, mid-September, and also on why the, um, I had a preliminary look on why the Northern Pacific Ocean is so warm. Um, and of course that warm water um, has been around for a, a long period of time. Um, it's basically resulting in the California drought. Uh, more recently, uh, the warm water has extended over to Japan and it's causing uh, massive heat waves with high humidity there, you know, and many fatalities and so on. So I'm going to elaborate on some of the ocean currents and relate the warm water to the El Nino and most importantly, I'm going to relate this uh, warm water to the uh, declining albedo um, and in the Arctic and the extreme um, temperature amplification there. And unfortunately, um, it looks like this warm water is, is a new state um, and I don't see the uh, California drought uh, ending as a result of that, uh, for example. I'll also discuss how it relates to James Hansen's uh, recent work uh, where he looks at how the um, ocean currents, the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation and the Southern Ocean, the Southern Ocean meridional overturning circulation, how those are connected. But the key point that James Hansen missed in his paper was the, the connection to the uh, Pacific uh, meridional overturning circulation, the North Pacific. Um, and uh, the changes in that um, are the reason why the warm water is piling up and we're getting huge uh, marine life kills. Um, basically, large, vast parts of the North uh, Pacific have become biological um, deserts, um, biological uh, kill zones, if you like. So let's look at some of the uh, data here. So just bear with me for a second. Um, I'm going to block a background light um, and uh, so it shows up better on my computer screen. So I'll just give me a second here. Okay, that should be much better, much darker on the screen. Okay, so basically here, um, what you're seeing is um, the, this is a basic thermohaline circulation, temperature salt circulation. So what, we're, what um, the Hansen paper is showing is that this, the Gulf Stream is not going as far north, it's coming further south. So there's a warm water pool here where it used to be. There's a cold water pool. That cold water pool is also added to by Greenland um, ice melt. Um, and that's setting up large um, temperature differences and large pressure differences, causing some massive, like November type gales to hit the UK, um, you know, in the middle of the summer. Um, so there's less, the Arctic's warming a lot faster than the equator because it's darkening, it's absorbing more solar energy. That lowers the temperature difference, so the jet streams slow down and become waver. The ocean currents also slow down. There's less need to transport heat up north. We're also seeing um, a lot of fresh water on the surface in Antarctica, so that's increasing the Antarctica sea ice, which is a seasonal thing because in the, the warmer water is staying deep down and undercutting the, um, uh, the ice caps on both Antarctica and also on Greenland. Um, what Hansen doesn't talk about is the Pacific branch of the MOC. So this is a very simplified version and I think things are a lot more complicated up here than the traditional um, the traditional science is saying on on this you know there's deep water coming up and then it's it's rising up to the surface and coming back here things are a lot more complicated than than that picture um, I believe so I uh, apologize for the darkness for a second okay so the northern Pacific, um, so this is one simplified view. Um, this is another view, um, and what you can see, um, you know, in the region we're looking at is you can see this, the, these gyres. So the Kuroshio current is like the Gulf Stream of the Northern Pacific. 
So it's coming up here, uh, coming across warm water, cools down, you get the currents returning back this way, and you get this gyre. Um, and the normal um, ocean, the normal water movement is this type, is, is that the trade winds are blowing across this way. Now with an El Nino, those winds slow down, and the currents can actually reverse, and you get this plug of warm water going here. So it disrupts the flow this way, so you get more flow up here. So the El Nino actually reinforces the warm water that gets stuck up here. Um, and uh, it can actually disrupt the Pacific Marinal overturning circulation, um, cause that to slow down. Um, so another view is this shown here. So this shows the Kuroshio current again, the North Pacific drift, and you get these gyres. So this is where some of the big garbage patches are. They're in the focal points, the two focal points of, of this ellipse. Um, so, but, so, this, um, so the El Nino, obviously, it disrupts all this flow this way, and you get more water piling up here, uh, like I said, as I'll show. Um, now, you know, I, I looked into the literature um, about how the ocean circulation in the North Pacific changes during glacial terminations, etc. There's still a lot of uh, learning um, going on here, uh, but the, the key point from these papers is that, um, uh, you know, a lot of them are old, right? They're seven years old, um, eight, year, eight, ten years old, you know, um, this sl slowdown of the marinal overturning circulation. Don't remember the date on this one. It's 2002. So we're talking about 13 years old here. Um, and this one's from the uh, 1989. Okay, large scale circulation. So the theory was all done then, you know, and nothing much has changed, but I don't think the picture is complete at all um, for what's going on. So let's look at the data um, now. What's the data telling us? Um, so here's the, um, the global view. And what we see is you've got very warm temperatures here. Okay, in these regions. This is from the El Nino, and water seems to be directed up to here and here. The Kuroshio current is not going as far north as coming here. If there is, in fact, uh, upwelling water, it would be in this region or this region, or, or um, cause, because that would be colder water. But we're getting these massive temperature anomalies. Uh, like, look, this is a vast region that's, uh, you know, up to four degrees warmer than normal. So these are temperature anomalies. Now in the Atlantic, I said the Gulf Stream is not moving as far north. It's cutting across here. So this water is warmer than normal. Um, it used to go up here, but it's no longer doing that. This water is much colder than normal. Um, if I look here at what the jet streams are doing, um, you can actually relate some of these um, undulations here to where the jet stream is. And the key thing for California is with all this warm water off here, uh, you have a drought here. You don't have the normal moisture laden winds coming across giving water, rain, precipitation to California during the normal rainy season. So you can track these jets and see, uh, relate the jet streams to this. Although it's a chicken and egg problem. Uh, what's causing what? Is it the warm ocean water causing the jets to distort or is it the other way around? It's a bit, there's a bit of both going on. Um, one thing I did look at is sea surface salinity and you can see that there's no real change. There, there, there's not a much higher sea surface salinity um, in this region, this really cold region coming back to here. Um, the salinity there. So this is not fresher water or anything, which means it's not maybe mostly derived from the from from uh, glacier melt in Greenland, and also it's further away. Why wouldn't the colder water be here? It's more that the jet stream has is not going there when it used to. Um, so that's the sea surface salinity, and if I look at sea surface height. Um, you can see that the cold areas, of course, have a lower sea surface height. This is in centimeters, so it's about a meter lower, a meter or more lower, um, the ocean surface, 1.2 meters here, and it's elevated here. So think of a bit of a waterfall through the Arctic. The water will flow through the Bering Strait, and the water will exit in these regions. 
Um, this is one of the reasons why this area is getting so much melt because you're getting an influx of warm water uh, through the Bering Strait. Um, so now let's have a look at the, this is a global view again showing the, uh, this is uh, August 5th of this year and you can see this, this is a warm pool of water that is nailing Japan right now. Um, this is the persistent, uh, uh, the, you know, some terms for this are the Paci Northern Pacific Blob, the ridiculously really resilient ridge, but let's look into more detail as, as to what's actually um, causing that right now. Um, and um, clearly um, this is going to have to be part one of uh, two parts um, because I'm, I'll be right, I'll, I'll need an extra, um, you know, I, I, I like to, I don't like these videos to be too long. So, um, so this is a type of uh, situation that we're seeing, but also notice here. So notice this pattern, you know, of where the warm water is, El Nino, a pulse here, you know, um, and, and one here, also warm water over here and then warm water here. Now this is the very cold water, which, and Hansen did talk about the cold water up here and, and near Antar Antarctica, but the key thing I've noticed is that the cold water here is correlated very strongly with the warm water here. Now this is my analysis, this is completely this is unpublished. I've, I've just n really studied this in the last few days and noticed these some observations here. So what I'll end up, um, I'll, I want to show you one more thing. So let's look at a movie. So this is a year ago, and this is a this is the average over a week um, a year ago. And then let's play this movie and see what happens. So you can see the warm water here is a persistent feature, although you don't have really cold water here. You have warm water here. Um, and we'll just play this now. Um, and you can see what happens. So this is a week later. You can see the progression. Um, let me slow it down, actually. Let me slow it down a bit, okay, and let's go, let's go back to the beginning here. Okay, so this is 2015, this is 2014, and we'll go. Okay, so what you can see is um, a week later, you can see there's change. Okay, and you get the cold water forming here around September. Okay, um, there is some week-to-week -week variation, but over the winter you get the westerlies coming off the Asia, and that's bringing war cold air over the ocean, that's causing the cooling here. Um, so you can see over the winter that this there's less, there's still lots of warm water here, but not as much as, as um, in the summer, and you still get this cold persistent patch here. Um, and then um, as we go, so now we're into March, uh, you know, we're starting to get into the northern um, summer, so this, the, this cold water gets pushed back, the warm water takes over, you can see the El Nino developing here, but you can also see this area strengthening, there's more heat going up here and here, um, so we're in, into uh, July, and you can see the El you know, things are getting very intense here. Um, and uh, we'll, so yeah, so we're stopped here. So this is, uh, um, stop. Okay, so we go back to here. Um, this is last year, and this is uh, what we have now. Um, whoops, this is what we have uh, last year, last year, last year. Okay, sorry, I gotta go back here last year this is what we have now so compare what we have now to what we have one year ago and the, first of all there's no cold water up here a year ago um there's uh no el nino okay the el nino was threatening to develop but it never did last year so notice the um the water here that's very warm the water here that's very warm the water here that's cold okay um so i think i'll stop here um, and, uh, this will be part one and, uh, I'll do, I'll do part two, uh, uh, now. Okay. Thank you.